this is the first lesson we are having for signs P5, P6 and uh, this is about reproduction in plants. Now the first question is why do living things reproduce? Right? Living things reproduce to ensure continuity of their own kind and prevent them from getting extinct like these dinosaurs you see over here. Now living things pass on characteristics from parents to their young. Many times the young do not look like the parents but eventually they do as they grow. Now these characteristics are passed on through genes. Some characteristics that are passed on from your parents to you are blood type, for example, color of skin, you have color of hair, there are many things. In plants, you've got taste of fruit and the color of flower. These are examples of characteristics that are passed on from the parent to the young. Let's look at the sexual reproduction in plants. Now this is a flower as you can see over here, right? The flowers are the reproductive organs of flowering plants. A male, when a male reproductive cell fuses with a female reproductive cell, a new plant is formed. And this is what we call sexual reproduction. Now, non-flowering plants do not have flowers and that's why they go through asexual reproduction. This you will learn later on in this video. Let's first look at what are the parts of a flower. This is a flower as you can see over here. And a flower is made up of two parts, mainly a male part and a female part. The petals, these ones, these are your petals. And these are your neutral parts. That means they are neither male nor female. And the petals serve two main functions mainly to attract pollinate, uh, pollinators which are insects and birds you will understand what pollinators are later on and also to protect the male reproductive parts are uh, the main reproductive parts I mean now the male parts we have got the anther which is over here the pollen this anther here produces pollen which contains the male reproductive cell all right and we've got the filament which as we pointed out here, this is your filament and the filament supports the anther. All right. And now let's look at the female parts. The female parts, we've got a stigma, which is this one over here, which receives the pollen grains. And then we've got the style, which is this, as you can see labeled here, this is the style and it holds up the stigma the ovary which is i'll erase everything so to make it clearer ovary is this entire component over here and it contains the ovules again now let me erase it and these are the ovules the individual circles you can see over here all right the ovules contains the female reproductive cell now let's look at what are the processes in the sexual reproduction in flowering plants. There are four processes. Firstly, pollination, and then comes fertilization, next seed disposal, and lastly germination. And we'll be looking at each of these processes in detail in this video. Okay, so starting off we have pollination. Now. Pollination is basically the transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma of the flower. Pollen, the pollen can come from the same flower and that is self-pollination or it can come from another flower which is called cross-pollination. Insects, birds or the wind can help to carry the pollen from the anther to the stigma. And... Um, the flowers that are actually pollinated by birds or insects are usually large and colorful. They also smell nice and this is to attract these pollinators. What are pollinators? Basically the birds and insects. So now moving on to fertilization. When the pollen as we see over here lands on the stigma it produces a pollen tube right 
as we see here. Now this pollen tube goes through the style to the ovary and connects to the ovules. Right? Now when the pollen, this pollen, this pollen fuses with the ovule, fertilization happens. And there is fertilization. Both the male and the female reproductive parts are required here. The male reproductive part is the pollen, the female reproductive part are the ovules. Only then can fertilization happen. Now, what happens after fertilization? Basically, most of the flower parts will drop off. The ovary that remains will develop into the fruit and the ovules will develop into the seed. Now, for this apple you see over here, the entire apple was initially the ovary. And these seeds were initially the ovules. Simple enough? Moving on to seed disposal. Why do plants need to disperse their seeds? Firstly, the disposal of fruits and seeds helps to scatter the fruits and seeds away from the parent plant. This reduces competition between the parent plant and the young plant and it prevents overcrowding. Now that we know why, the, why plants disperse their seeds, let's figure out how. There are four main methods how, by animals, water, wind and by a splitting or explosive action. Now let's look at the seed dispersal by animals. When animals eat the fruits, they throw away the seeds and this is true for the mango. Or either they will pass them out and this is true for the guava. On other cases like this mimosa plant over here, the seeds will get stuck on the animals bodies because they have hooks and it helps them to disperse their seeds. Now let's look at water dispersal. Now this is for plants growing in or near the water. The plants usually drop the fruits or seeds into the water itself. Now these fruits or seeds can float and so they get carried somewhere else. They usually have waterproof coverings of fibrous husks which help to trap air and help them to float. Like the coconut here which has got fibrous husks. For wind dispersal, the seeds are usually light and small, like the lalang seeds for you can see over here. They are easily carried by the wind. Some seeds have wing-like structures like the shorier fruit. Some have hairs as you can see over here too. Like or another example here would be the dandelion. D-A-N-D-E-L-I-O-N. Now this fact this properties help the seeds to be easily carried by the wind. Our last method of seed dispersal is splitting. The fruits split open when ripe and shoot the seeds out in all directions. Now this is true for the rubber plant. This is the rubber plant and that's how it happens. Moving on to the last stage of the sexual reproduction in plants, we have germination. For a seed to germinate, they need air, water and warmth. Now, what we see over here, as, as the seeds grow, the roots start to grow too. However, until the shoot appears, the seed is still unable to make its own food. So the plant gets its nutrients from the seed leaves, from the food stored in the seed leaves. What, where are the seed leaves? This brown color thing you see over here, that is a seed leaf. This is the seed leaf. And basically when the shoot appears, the plant can make its own food and you, as you can see, the seed leaf drops. Lastly, reproduction in non-flowering plants. Now these are plants that do not produce flowers like the, bird, the bird's nest fern and so they do not produce seeds. However, to reproduce, they go through asexual reproduction and so they reproduce by spores. Now spores are very small and they are found on the underside of the leaves. 
when once the spore bags are ripe the spores are dispersed and can grow into a new plant.